Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a thief named Marion, seen attempting to steal a horse. However, her plans are thwarted when she is captured by Lord Robin of Loxley, an aristocrat and an English longbow master. As they interact, Robin is smitten by Marion's charm, and she in turn finds herself drawn to him. They soon begin living together, enjoying a blissful existence. Their happiness is interrupted when Robin receives a call to arms, from the church, compelling him to join the war against more soldiers. Despite his proficiency with a bow, he assures Marion he will return safely. During the conflict, he faces a perilous encounter with an Arabian soldier, Yahya, but is saved by one of his comrades just in time. After the war, Robin's superior, Guy of Gisborne, commits atrocities against their people, leading to a tense confrontation. When Yahya's child is threatened, he himself intervenes, demanding the safety of his son. Despite Robin's attempts to reason with the ruthless commander Guy of Gisborne, the commander ignores pleas for mercy, and proceeds to threaten the life of the boy. Unable to stand by idly, Robin intervenes, resulting in a clash. Tragically, Guy of Gisborne ends the life of the innocent child before Robin's eyes. In the chaos, Robin is injured by an arrow, leading to his retreat. Upon returning home after four years, he discovers his house in ruins, a stark contrast to the home he left behind. Seeking answers, he turns to his old friend Friar Tuck, who informs of rumors of Robin's demise. The sheriff, taking advantage of his absence, had seized his property, and expelled Marion from their home. Friar Tuck directs him to Marion, who now resides near a coal mine outside the city. As he approaches Marion, he witnesses her sharing a tender moment with another man, Will, culminating in a kiss. Realizing that she has moved on, Robin understands that she believed him to be dead, and she got married. Contemplating his next move, he hesitates to approach her, unsure of what action to take. As he turns to leave, Yahya unexpectedly blocks his path, introducing his name's translation as John. Meanwhile, amidst a gathering convened by the sheriff, the city's leader, discussions revolve around the necessity of increasing taxes for the looming war effort. Marion, accompanied by her husband, voices concerns about the burden of taxation, only to find her objections dismissed by the sheriff. Amidst the crowd's murmurs, Tuck makes a surprising revelation, Robin Hood is alive. Marion, taken aback by the news, experiences a whirlwind of emotions, joy at Robin's survival, tempered by the pang of separation from him. Her heart still harbors love for him, evident in the conflicted expressions that flit across her face. Meanwhile, Robin confides in John, recounting his past encounters, and his determination to uncover the truth behind the tax collection. John, now a trusted ally, shares Robin's resolve and suggests a covert investigation into the tax system's workings. However, when Marion seeks out Robin, eager to reunite, John intervenes, weary of exposing their clandestine plans. He persuades Robin to prioritize their mission over personal desires, urging him to remain committed to aiding the oppressed. Under John's tutelage, Robin hones his archery skills, initially stumbling, but swiftly mastering the art, becoming a formidable force with the bow and arrow. Through rigorous training and unwavering determination, he prepares himself for the challenges ahead, steadfast in his resolve to fight for justice and freedom. With a daring scheme in mind, he devises a plan to liberate the government treasury, intending to redistribute its wealth to the oppressed populace. Venturing to the heavily guarded location where the treasury is housed, he employs his unparalleled archery skills, to swiftly dispatch the soldiers standing in his path. With precision and stealth, he eliminates every obstacle in his way, clearing the path to the heart of the treasury. Upon reaching the area where tax payments are collected, he makes a bold move, he contributes the largest sum of tax, strategically aiming to curry favor with both the sheriff and the local populace. His unexpected generosity does not go unnoticed, and when the sheriff witnesses his display of wealth, he is impressed by the outlaw's audacity and resourcefulness. Robin's calculated gambit pays off, earning him a newfound level of respect and admiration, from the very authority he opposes. As he prepares to depart, Marion intercepts him, seeking closure on their tumultuous past. With a resolute demeanor, he tersely declares the end of their former connection, signaling his unwavering commitment to his cause. Before he can delve further into the exchange, John's call beckons him away, prompting him to leave abruptly, his mind set on furthering their mission. In the wake of his departure, he leaves behind more than just a trail of disruption, he leaves a bag of stolen treasure outside Marion's residence, a silent gesture of support for her financial struggles. Despite their fractured relationship, his actions speak volumes, underscoring his enduring concern for her well-being, amidst the chaos of their shared struggle for justice. Meanwhile, Tuck, acting as an informant for the sheriff, 
approaches him with alarming news of yet another theft from the government treasury. Concerned about the repeated breaches in security, the sheriff instructs him to bolster the guard presence around the treasury, to prevent further losses. In a clandestine rendezvous, he confides in Marion, revealing the ongoing plundering of the treasury. Her response surprises him, instead of condemning the thief, she expresses solidarity with their cause, advocating for the redistribution of wealth to aid the impoverished. Unbeknownst to them, Robin eavesdrops on their conversation, reaffirming his belief in Marion's unwavering support for their mission. Emboldened by her endorsement, Robin seizes another opportunity to raid the treasury, defying the sheriff's tightened security measures. With precision and finesse, he once again plunders the treasury's riches, this time with the explicit intention of redistributing the wealth to those in need. As word of his altruistic deeds spreads, he garners widespread admiration from the common folk, who hail him as their champion and protector. Capitalizing on his newfound popularity, he embraces his role as a symbol of hope for the downtrodden masses, earning himself the moniker The Hood. His exceptional archery skills and daring escapades further solidify his legendary status, as he continues to outwit the sheriff's forces at every turn. However, as Robin's exploits gain notoriety, tensions escalate within the ruling elite. At a gathering of lords, Robin's name is raised, prompting discussions about offering a bounty for his capture. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, the sheriff and Tuck face pressure from higher authorities, including the ominous presence of the cardinal, whose displeasure with the handling of the hood situation threatens to upend the delicate balance of power. It becomes apparent that even the formidable sheriff is not immune to the influence and scrutiny of the church hierarchy. As the archdeacon's departure signals a shift in the sheriff's agenda, he confers with Gisborne, his trusted confidant, plotting their next move in the shadows. To mask their ulterior motives, the sheriff orchestrates a lavish gathering in honor of the cardinal's imminent arrival. Amidst the opulent affair, Robin John and Marion navigate the sea of elitist attendees. Meanwhile, Tuck covertly swipes a set of keys from a guard, surreptitiously passing them to Marion for later use. Seizing an opportunity to manipulate the situation to his advantage, Robin stages a dramatic confrontation, feigning coercion to present Tuck as a supposed threat to the sheriff and the cardinal. With cunning persuasion, he convinces them to excommunicate Tuck from the church, thereby eliminating a potential adversary from their midst. Shortly thereafter, the sheriff seizes the moment to unleash chaos upon the unsuspecting town, dispatching Gisborne and his ruthless soldiers to pillage and terrorize the populace. Robin springs into action, pursuing Gisborne in a desperate bid to thwart the onslaught of violence, and protect the innocent. In the heat of the pursuit, Robin's true identity as the Hood is inadvertently revealed to Marion, shattering the veil of secrecy that once veiled his heroic deeds. Despite his valiant efforts, Robin finds himself unable to halt the ruthless advance of the forces, and John falls victim to their clutches, taken captive by the merciless enemy. Amidst the turmoil, a beacon of hope emerges as Will, a resolute voice of dissent, addresses a gathering of townsfolk, urging them to rise against the tyranny of the sheriff. Sensing a pivotal moment, Robin boldly steps forward, casting aside the guise of anonymity to reveal himself as the Hood, rallying the embattled citizens to reclaim their dignity, and reclaim their town from oppression. With Tuck's strategic guidance, plans are set in motion to stage a daring coup, targeting the sheriff's convoy laden with ill-gotten riches. Amidst the chaos of the uprising, Robin and the determined townsfolk execute their meticulously devised plan, orchestrating the dramatic downfall of the sheriff's convoy. As the wagon plunges into a concealed pitfall, the amassed riches are swiftly liberated, destined to be redistributed among the grateful citizens. Liberated from his captors, John rejoins the fray, lending his formidable strength to the burgeoning rebellion. A fierce battle erupts between the oppressed masses and the sheriff's loyalists, with Robin finding himself locked in a fierce duel against his longtime adversary, Gisborne. Despite having the opportunity to deliver a fatal blow, his conscience prevails, sparing Gisborne's life, as a testament to his unexpected valor in the face of conflict. In a tender moment of reunion amidst the turmoil, Robin and Marion's love is rekindled, culminating in a heartfelt embrace and a shared kiss, a gesture observed with jealousy by the disgruntled Will, now scarred by the explosion that ravaged him. Enraged and embittered, Will bitterly relinquishes Marion to Robin's arms, his wounded pride driving him further into darkness. As the violence escalates to dangerous levels, Robin realizes the need for drastic action to prevent further bloodshed. With unwavering resolve, he steps into the fray, boldly revealing his true identity to the beleaguered townsfolk, urging them to lay down their arms, and embrace a path of peace and reconciliation. Subsequently, he finds himself ensnared within the confines of the church, facing the wrathful sheriff in a final confrontation. However, before the sheriff can carry out his punishment, 
John emerges from within the ranks of the soldiers, joining forces with Robin to overthrow their oppressor. With swift justice, they bind the sheriff, and hoist him by the neck, delivering poetic retribution for his crimes against the people. As order begins to be restored, the cardinal seizes the opportunity to extend his influence, offering Will the chance to ascend to the position of sheriff, in exchange for his loyalty to the church. With a newfound sense of authority, Will embraces the role, branding Robin and his allies as outlaws. Undeterred by the looming threat, Robin defiantly challenges Will, symbolically piercing the facade of authority with a well-aimed arrow through the wanted poster. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.